Hi, this is example number three of section 15.5 uh, to 15.7. So we here have a ball that is attached to a cord. The cord is this one right here. This is the cord that goes through a hole in that table, right? So we have a smooth table and a cord that is uh, pulling all that uh, ball and that yellow here is the trajectory of or path of that ball and when the ball is in r1 which is 1.75 feet the velocity is four feet and you recall that the velocity is always tangent to the trajectory right so that's the velocity one and then we have that uh, by pulling that cord through the hole, the ball get closest to the hole and the cord is pulling down, right, with a constant velocity of six feet over second. So that force, which we do not know the value, we have that the cord is moving at a constant velocity of feet, six feet per second. And we have been asked to find what is the speed of that ball when it reaches point two, which is have at r equals zero point six feet, and uh, what is the velocity? So let me write here. We want to fill out velocity two is the our unknown, and the work done. Remember that uh, we can name work as w or, uh, or or as u. So we want to find the work done by the force. As we see, we are relating distance with velocity, and I'm going to apply the principle of angular momentum. And one way to write the principle of angular momentum, as you recall, is the angular momentum in position one plus the addition of all moments respect to time will be equals to the angular momentum in position two. Since we see here the moment respect to C, this will be X, Y, and C, the moment respect to C are equals to zero because the only force is the tension of the cord and it points towards the axis, to the origin of the axis, so we don't have any momentum. So this is equals to zero Therefore, we have actually conservation of angular momentum in C direction, right? You recall the definition of angular momentum, if we write it as a, as a vector, is the, the moment of the linear momentum since we are working only in C direction, we can write it as a scalar quantity, which will be that one right here. But it's always important to uh, recall that this is a vectorial product, or cross product, because the, the components that contribute to that angular momentum are perpendicular. So because as we see here, in the first position, we do have this is perpendicular, but in this position, we have a uh, velocity is two, but this is parallel to the trajectory, so we know that always the velocity is parallel to the trajectory, but it's not perpendicular to my radius. So I actually have two components, let me draw it in a different color, and here we have this velocity and this velocity. This velocity is the one that is perpendicular and this velocity is, let's call it radial velocity, eh, because the velocity is tangential to the trajectory. How much is the radial velocity? Well, we are being told that the core is being pulled by a constant velocity of six, and then we want to find that a total velocity. So we will have to find this component, which is perpendicular to the radius, and then find the, the magnitude of the velocity. So we have that here, so this will be r, and this will be h2, will be equals to radius 2, mass of the ball, which is given, 
times the velocity, but the velocity of two perpendicular. So let's call that, I call it perpendicular. Then we have that here, so R1 M V R what is equals to R2 M V2. These two masses are exact same mass, so we have here that R1 is 1.75, then the velocity, which is perpendicular, which is 4, equals to R2, which is 0 0.6, times the velocity perpendicular. So we can solve for velocity that is perpendicular, and we get the value that the velocity, the component perpendicular to the chord is equals to 11.67 feet over second. So to get the total velocity or the magnitude of the velocity, the velocity of two will be equals to the square root of the velocity perpendicular, I just add, times the velocity that I call radial. And the velocity radial, as we, we know, is the six uh, feet over second uh, that is being produced by the force pulling the cord. So this will be equals to the square root of 11.67 squared plus 6 squared. Therefore, the velocity of 2 is equals to 13.1 feet over second. Okay, so that was the first part that we were asked to find, which is the speed of the ball at instant two. And the second part that we are asked to find, this is the solution of the first part, right? And the second part that we are asked to find is the work done by the force. Do we calculate the work done by the force with the principle of of work and energy. In this case, we do not have potential energy. We only have kinetic energy and work done by that force. So, well, the way that I like to write it is work is T2 minus T1. This is the same expression, same as T1 plus work done equals T2, right? So you can write it as this or this. Work done is the difference between the two kinetic energies or, well, kinetic energy in the first position plus the work done by the forces, this is the work done by the forces, is equals to energy in the second position. I'm going to use that one here. So the work done by the force will be equals to the kinetic energy in the second position we already have the, the value of the velocity, which is then one half the mass times the velocity two minus one half mass velocity one squared. And the mass, you remember that, as you recall, in British units, the weight is a base unit and the mass is a derived unit. So we have to, to get the mass, we have to uh, pull the weight and divide it by the gravity. So it will one half of the mass, which will be 0 0.8, divided by the gravity, which is 32.2, times the velocity 2, which you already calculated, 13.1 squared minus 1 half the same mass, times the velocity in the first position, which is given, which is 4. So the work done by the force between the position one and two, you have to calculate these values, and this gives me 1.94 feet pound. 